It's a blessing to have you all with us. Who's ready to uh, hear from the Lord this morning? Say hallelujah. 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 Amen. Let's go ahead and get things started off right this morning. We're going to go ahead and ask the Lord to meet with us and pray over our prayer list this morning. So let's pray at this time. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Jesus, Lord. Thank you for our many blessings, God. We just thank you so much for sending the only Son of Jesus down the cross for our sins. We're so thankful this morning. Lord, we just thank you so much for the amazing time we've already had in your house in Sunday school, God. We pray that you continue to let that overflow here in the morning worship hour, God. We pray that you just uh, speak to every heart in attendance, God, and every person that's listening to my Facebook Live or internal broadcasting. Lord, I just pray you just meet every need today, Lord. Lord, I just pray that you just anoint the pastor on high, give him the right words to say at the right time, Lord. Uh, so glad to have him back here with us, uh, Lord. We just thank you so much for answering your prayers, God. Lord, we ask you to please be with um, the choirs that sing and all the special singing this morning. We pray that everything that we do and said today, Lord, just be uplifting and glorifying your name, Lord. Lord, we ask you to please be with our prayer list this morning. Lord, we ask you to please be with Beverly King, Jack Dale, Jamie Cole, Nancy Newton, Audrey Hopkins, Robin and Vicki Reed, E.T. and Deborah Connor, uh, Christy McBride, Shane Moorfield, Mike and Diane Mills, Steve and Sheila Richardson, John Farmer, Nancy Farmer, uh, Scott Dean and his back, uh, Danny Warwick, Brenda Bryan, uh, Special Unspoken, uh, Maureen Johnson, Judy Snow, Jackson Snow, Gary McComb, Mike Tickle and his Unspokens, uh, Donald Ricketts, Lord, ask you to please be with uh, Brenda and Michaela, Lord, they have COVID, uh, Cynthia and Bobby Joe Brown, Lord, and their health needs, and Virginia Walker, Lord, uh, recovering from a stroke. We ask you to please be with uh, a number of people who have COVID, God, we pray you continue to be with uh, Steve and uh, Jake Tickle, Les Young, uh, Polly Fryer, Jeanette, and uh, John Tickle, Lord, we pray you just be with them and bless them and heal them, Lord. But we just pray in Jesus' name you just have your will and way today, God, and we just pray that you just answer all these needs according to your precious and holy will. And Lord, we ask you just to please search the hearts of every person here, God. If someone today does not know you as Lord and Savior, we pray today be the day of their salvation, Lord. We just pray you just work a miracle today, Lord, and we just love you and thank you for what you've done and what you're going to do. For us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, this time I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn it over to Jeremy Cole in the choir.
there's no way. I'm glad we got a home in heaven and we just call upon his name. Amen. Amen. All right. This time we have Brother Bill Snow come on up for our birthday and Sunday school report. You put your hands together for him this morning. You say send him on up or? Send him on. Oh, okay. That's all right. Good morning. Good morning. Grin, smile, or something. Let people know you're happy. It's good to be out and about inside. Right? Cold out there. Y'all well, need to thank me. I did my reverse snow dance. <laughs> and all of it did come. So I, I accept checks. Thank you. Monday, January the 31st. Time flies when you're having fun, don't it? Terry Davis. <laughs> Brandon Yancey. <laughs> I heard the preacher said, stretch it out a little bit. <laughs> Say three days. <laughs> you got slapped for that. Yeah, you did. <laughs> we still love you, buddy. I guarantee you. Thursday, February the 3rd, Pastor. You sure? You owe me one. <laughs> Saturday, February the 5th. Skylar Bowen. I miss anybody. Tammy Wilson is tomorrow. Tammy? I better not lose that one. That's, what's that? Monday. Monday 31st, right? Is that right? Yes. Okay. Happy birthday, Tammy. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. <laughs> well, so we had one last Saturday. Saturday, yesterday, wasn't it? Well, you don't look younger. I'm not older at all. That man beside of me looks younger. <laughs> Them tires will do it to you, little buddy. <laughs> All right, don't forget your tracks. Got plenty of them. They're not disappearing for some reason. I guess it's too cold to get out there and hand them out. Just go, put some in the car. Don't forget your missionaries. Pray for all of them. David and Mary Ellen Wise is a uh, missionary for this week. Sunday school. 100% class. Primer. Stand up, girl. Y'all gonna stand up. Teachers. Oh, that's <laughs> oh, 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 I didn't mean to embarrass you. I'm sorry. Look at her face. <laughs> Y'all did a good job. Uh, total in Sunday school was 51. I had one visitor. Okay. And I want to thank you, visitor, for coming to see us. We're a good bunch of people. Come on back. Sunday school starts 945. If you miss Sunday school, you miss the blessing. That's all I got. <laughs>
standing to your feet. Turn all the way over to page 248. We're going to sing all verses, Now I Belong to Jesus. Page 248, Now I Belong to Jesus.
Sister Lewis, aren't you glad we've got a God we can adore? Amen. There's not much left in this world we can adore today. Amen? First John chapter 4, verse 3. These are indeed times of change. There are times of adversity in the country that we're living in. And it's even now creeping into our churches. Everything is changing so rapidly, we can hardly keep up with the circumstances around us. At times it's confusing, it's bewildering, and at times it's frightening. The world's being led, what the Bible calls the spirit of Antichrist. And it's setting up for the rapture of the church, the coming of the Lord Jesus in the air, and the coming of the Antichrist upon this earth in the tribulation period that lies ahead. Look at the world stage. Look at what's taking place around you. And you can clearly see it. It's, it's a blind man can even see it. We're being swallowed up by the spirit of Antichrist in America. If we're not careful, it's going to destroy our churches. The Canadian Parliament on January the 8th passed a law, C-4. And here's what C-4 says. It describes as a myth the belief that heterosexuality and cisgender, which means denoting or relating to a person whose sense of personal identity and gender corresponds with their birth sex, opposite of transgender, says that it's a myth to believe that heterosexuality is normal. It's a myth to say that you are the sex you were born with. You know, somebody's lost their brains. Somebody's lost their mind. Here's the law. Counseling that heterosexuality is proper, homosexuality is wrong, and transgenderism is wrong, to counsel in that way and without the world view, you will be jailed for five years. That means a pastor cannot counsel that homosexuality is a sin, that transgender is against the word of God. In Canada, that's against the law now. You better hold your breath. It'll be here next. The day of Antichrist is here. Pastor Tim Stevens, and I think Ken's got a picture for you, was in prison twice last year. This is him being arrested for keeping his Calgary church open during COVID. He also told Fox News that he believes persecution is going to increase in Canada and other Western countries, and he's right. Pastor Arter Pulaski, a Polish-Canadian pastor from Calvary, Alberta, Canada, has faced repeated dramatic arrest after refusing to limit church services, described Bill C-4 as a straight from Soviet Russia. And it's true. This is all coming from the spirit of Antichrist that's taken over our world as we draw closer to the coming of Christ. Because the Bible clearly says in the book of Daniel, you can't miss it, that the Antichrist will not have the desire of women. He will be a homosexual. So the spirit of Antichrist is ramping up in this world we live in today. And it's, it's trying to take over the world. You can't even watch a commercial now without seeing a man kiss a man or a woman kiss a woman. If my uncle was alive today, he'd put his foot through the TV. <laughs> it's just truth. And if you find yourself being offended by what I'm saying today, you may already be under the spirit of Antichrist. Because the Bible's clear, folks. The Bible's clear. And the Bible's right, and the world is wrong. This is irrefutable proof of the soon rapture of the church. What does the Bible say about the spirit of Antichrist? That's what I want to talk to you about this Sunday and next Sunday. First John chapter 4, verse 3, the definition of the spirit of Antichrist. And every spirit that confesseth 
not Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. Folks, it's crept upon us. It's almost to overtake us. And I'm going to tell you why. All that has to happen for evil to prevail is Christians to do nothing. And that's what's wrong in our world today. The church is doing nothing. We're just sitting back letting them preach their lies, and that's okay if that's what they want to preach and that's what they want to believe. That's fine. But we have the right to stand up and say God is right and the world is wrong. But they're going to take that away from us. That's the devil's goal. That's what the Antichrist is going to do when he rules and reigns on this earth. He's going to wipe out truth and envelop it with wicked religion. Religion's not salvation. Religion's a bunch of acts trying to perform religious acts. Being saved is a relationship between you and God that's eternal and personal. You can't just take it off when you leave the building and put it on when you come through the door. It's a lifestyle. The spirit of Antichrist simply denies everything Christ is and everything he stands for. And it is the secular attempt of erasing Christ out of our society. And that's exactly what's going on. They're trying to erase Christ. They don't care if you have a church. They don't care if you're religious. But don't say Christ is the Savior. Don't say the Bible is the Word of God. Deny all of that. The spirit of Antichrist has always been here. And it's now ramping up and taking over our world, denying Christ as Savior. And the true fact of the Bible is the very word of God. We cannot put our head in the sand and ignore it any longer. It's here. It's escalating every day by leaps and bounds. All that must happen for the spirit of Antichrist to prevail in this world is for the church to silence itself. And that's what's happening. The church is silencing itself. I look for any time they'll pull us off of Facebook. Won't allow us on there because we preach the truth of the Word of God. They're trying to silence the church. They're trying to silence the Word of God. God's people, the church, must stand for the Savior and the truth of the Bible. I'm proud to call myself a Christian. I'm proud to call myself a Christian. Number two. First of all, we see that the definition of the Antichrist. Number two, done all. Look at Ephesians 6.13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Folks, the evil day is here. And having done what? Everything we possibly can to proclaim that Jesus is the Savior and the Bible is the Word of God. They may not believe it, and that's their option, and that's their choice. But it's our obligation to stand for Jesus in this lost and dying world. It's our obligation to give them the chance to see the truth. Hollywood's not giving them that chance. Washington's not giving them that chance. So we have to stand for the truth, because Hollywood's not going to preach it, and Washington's not going to pass it. We have to stand for the Word of God. The Bible says, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, that's the belt of truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. In other words, we don't just say it's the truth, we live it as truth. We believe it and live it. We're not hypocrites. You don't say one thing on Sunday and do something else on Monday through Saturday. We stand for the truth. The truth does matter. The world wants you to think it doesn't matter anymore. People lie and then they swear to it as the very truth. We saw that in just a few weeks ago when Governor Youngkin was inaugurated as governor of Virginia. The state senator, Louise Lucas, the next day got on the air and rebuked Governor Youngkin for calling historically black colleges in the state as an entertainment industry. There was one problem with that. He never said it. I listened to the whole speech twice. 
He never said that. But she was trying to start a ruckus, tell a lie, and try to start things rough for Governor Youngkin. You never saw it on News Set 13. You never saw it on any Virginia news station. I'm hoping it was because he knew it was a lie and didn't tell it. So he meant all me. But let me tell you something, folks. People would rather believe a lie than the truth. They'd rather climb a tree and tell a lie than stand on the ground and tell the truth. And so this is just an example of how politics works. Hollywood is no better. Hollywood doesn't do anything but lie. I was watching a TV program the other day, and a lady on this program was trying to explain to her granddaughter what religion was. And I like to pull what little hair I had in my head out. They were trying to describe religion. She was putting it down and said she believed in the ACLU and had signed all her grandchildren up for it. That religion was just a hoax of men to try to control people. If I hadn't spent so much money on my TV, I'd have put a foot through it. That's truth. And she said everything but what was the truth. What is the truth, preacher? The Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. They mentioned churches, they mentioned the Jewish religion, but they never said the word Christ. They don't want the word Christ involved because the word Christ is truth. And when you say Christ, you make people think. They don't want you to think. They just want you to listen and follow like a bunch of numb robots. No, Christ is the truth. He's the Savior. There's no respect for the truth or being responsible enough to tell the truth. There was a day when I was a kid, you could watch the news and believe what they said. But you can't believe anything they say today. Everything's twisted. Everything's demented. Sometimes saying nothing, let me rephrase that, it's always bad to say nothing. Because saying nothing is just like lying. And when the church doesn't stand up and say the truth, we're lying. We have an obligation to preach the whole counsel of God. Why? For one reason. You see, man wants to be left alone to live their life their way and enjoy life their way. But you see, the Bible's true. There's a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the ends thereof are the ways of what? You see, if we don't stand up for the truth, if we don't proclaim Christ as death, burial, and resurrection as the way to be saved, people are going to enjoy their life the way they want to. But they're going to die and go to hell for all of eternity. You see, America wants to spare people's feelings. Don't hurt nobody's feelings. My mama didn't believe in that. My mama didn't believe in that physically nor spiritually. If she couldn't get it in spiritually, she'd hurt you physically. Some of y'all look like y'all need a whipping this morning. Hmm? Folks, we have to stand for the truth. I'm not here to hurt anyone. But when I say things, it's going to offend people because I preach the truth. And I have to take that chance to offend somebody in hopes that just maybe They'll listen to enough of the truth of God to find Jesus as their Savior. And he can change their life and give them a new beginning. We're in, a, we're in the lying last days when people would rather believe a lie and tell a lie than to hear and say the truth. The definition of the spirit of Antichrist. We need to have done all to stand for Jesus. Number three. The days have arrived. Look at 1 John 2.18. Little children, it is the last time. And as you have heard that Antichrist shall come, and even now there are many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the what? The last time. We need to get serious and stop playing games as Christians. We need to get serious about what the church needs to do. I'm so proud of y'all this morning. Y'all are not the frozen chosen. 
Y'all are in a nice warm church and a nice padded pew hearing the word of God. I'm so proud of you. I don't know what to do. You're faithful. You know what it takes to be a light in a dark world? Faithfulness. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night takes faithfulness. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday takes faithfulness of God's people to be lights in this dark world. The world's full of antichrist doing the devil's bidding as he prepares to unleash the tribulation on the world. I remember when I was a young boy, my uncle and aunt had gotten saved. My daddy's uncle and aunt, let me get that right, had gotten saved and started going to a church in South Boston. And boy, the family was in an uproar because they took your TV out of the house. Oh, they were the worst people on God's green earth because they wouldn't let their children watch television. And they took the TV out of the house. And I remember hearing people in my family say, boy, they're nuts. They didn't become religious fanatics. They are crazy, crazy, crazy for taking their TV out of their house. They were probably smarter than they'll ever know. I know I'm not going to need many amens on that. But it's the truth. The television is the bully pulpit of the Antichrist. It is the one tool swaying lost and saved alike to think wrong and to believe lies and to be deceived. We need to limit what television we watch. We need to limit what we see on the internet. We need to limit what we watch and keep what is going in our mind to poison our brains. Families don't spend any time together anymore. First time in a long time. All my family got in one car. That was a full car. Poor Wendy. She had to sit in the back because she was the littlest one sitting in the back. Then I think Jason got nice to him switch with her after a while. We got in the car and we went off somewhere, had dinner together and come back. Best time I've had and I couldn't tell you when. Didn't nobody fight. Didn't nobody fuss. And that's a miracle for us. <laughs> we had a good time. Eat like a bunch of hogs. Say amen. And I didn't even have to pay for it. Glory to God in the highest. That was the great part. But we had a good time together. And there were no TVs, no internet, just us. That's the way it used to be when families stayed together. Today, families don't even know who each other are. They live the whole life together. They don't even know each other anymore. Why? Because we've swallowed the bully pulpit. The internet, the television, and even the radio. Folks, we've got to go back to believing the Word of God because the days have arrived. The world is full of Antichrist. It's his little children. We are the little children of God. We're his children. We are as the church of Christ. We've got to wake up, stand up, speak up for the Lord and his truth. Eternal souls are in the balance. You see, you don't think about dying until you start getting gray hair. Or it starts falling out. Or your teeth start falling out. Or your legs don't work no more. Then you start thinking about, maybe this thing is going to come to an end. And the doctor puts you on the operating table and takes a tumor out big as your fist. You start thinking about, this, this could have turned out bad. I looked at the obituaries yesterday. I do every day to make sure I'm not in there. And honest to heaven, three out of five were between 45 and 60. I'm in that number. And I want to tell you something, folks. I'm getting old. And I have some of you older folks older than me say, you don't know nothing yet. Amen. I'm afraid it's coming. And if it gets worse than this, I don't know what I'm going to do. I guess I'll survive till the end. But as old as I am, I'm still his little child. You're still his little child. That's not an offensive statement. 
Human beings compared to God are just children. Say amen or amen. Little children have to be loved and cared for and watched after and taught. Amen? And I don't care how old you are, how bald you are, or how crippled you are, you're still his little child. And he still needs to protect you, love you, and teach you. And this is where we get it from. Not ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox. We don't get this from Oprah Winfrey. And we sure don't get it from Joy Behar. Don't know why they named her Joy. They should have named her Sad. <laughs> That's not where we get our truth from. We don't get it from school anymore. Boy, they're mad in Virginia. Have y'all heard about it this morning? They're mad in Virginia because now Governor Youngkin has a phone number. And if they're teaching something you don't like, die that number. The teachers is having a heyday fit. Because you know what? Kids can go home and tell mama now and daddy now and they can call the governor and say, something's wrong. Yeah. Let me tell you what's wrong, that they're nervous that that can happen. They ought to be so transparent they're not afraid for that to happen. Spirit of Antichrist. Teaching lies instead of the truth. See, some, they don't want to tell some truth because it is truth. Not all truth is good. Not all truth is good. Sometimes it's bad. But I'd rather know the bad so I can do good and know the difference between the two. That's not happening in the world of the Antichrist. It's all lies and deception. Believe the deception. Fall under the delusion. But the sad part is what I said just a minute ago. The end result of not standing for the truth is these people are dying and going to hell. What amazed me more about these obituaries than the age was when I read the obituaries, how many of them didn't even have a funeral service? No church affiliation, no pastor. When I was growing up, the first thing you put after your family in your obituary was I was a member of so-and-so church. Now they don't even, if they are, they don't admit it, don't care. Why? Because God doesn't matter anymore. Truth doesn't matter anymore. They don't even have a funeral. You say, preacher, why do you have a funeral service? Brag on the dead? No, brag on the Savior of the dead. That's why you have a funeral service. I've never had anybody saved at a wedding. Matter of fact, I've lost some church members at a wedding. <laughs> I have. But I've had a whole lot of people saved at funerals. Because why? What are they thinking about? Death. Death. But you know why they don't have a funeral? They just want to forget about it. They don't want to think about death. They don't want to think about it. That's what the devil wants you to do. Just don't think about it. Just live your life and fall off the cliff to the earth and die and go straight to hell. That's exactly what he wants. But the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Say amen. These are the last times. Get this. These are the last opportunities we have to get the gospel out to a lost and dying world. Bill is right. Get those tracks and get them out. I was in South Boston the other day getting gas. And I pulled up to pay for the gas. And I looked above my visor and there was one of my books. Holy Spirit said, give it to that woman. I said, too many cars behind me. God said, what difference does that make? I said, Lord, she's busy. He said, what difference does that make? I reached up and grabbed that book, and she was mean looking. Y'all ever met a mean looking woman at a gas station? <laughs> you ain't stupid. There's a gun behind that wall. And if she's looking mean, she just might use it. Say amen on me. Or she might say something ugly and hurt my feelings. Y'all don't ever have y'all's feelings hurt, do you? You become this altar right now. I reached up and grabbed that, and I said, ma'am, I said, I know you're busy, and I know you probably will be busy all day, but just in case you have a minute when you ain't doing that, here's a little something for you to read. I was looking for the gun. I was looking for the face. Biggest old smile come on her face. She said, thank you. I'll read that when I can. 
I said, thank you, and I appreciate that. You see, you say, Preach, what's so wonderful about that? <laughs> Two things. Number one, I may never see that woman again, but I have told her how to be saved. I've given her the opportunity to know the Lord, and that is worth reaching above the visor and handing out to women. Didn't hurt me a bit. The devil lied to me and gave me reasons not to, and if you're honest, he's lied to you. We gotta live above that. We're in our last opportunities. Me and Brother Larry Tickle. We weren't perfect, but we loved each other. And every Friday we go visit. And when we got done, we went to the mission field. We went to the Chinese buffet. <laughs> Brother Larry elbowed me, we're going to the mission field today. Yes, sir, we are. And when it was up here in Nordam, we walk in that door, you had to pay. They didn't trust you. Well, you had to pay when you walked through the door. So I pay one week, and he paid the other week. So it was my week to pay. So I paid, and lie, he's, he's like a horse at a gate at a horse race. He just can't wait to pay so he can get in that line. But as soon as he and I walked through the door, there's this little old Chinese lady that waited on us all the time. I went in one day by myself. She said, where he at? <laughs> Talking about Larry's bald head. Then I went in one day. This is Larry's story. I don't know if it's true or not. But anyway, he said he went in. She said, where well, preach at? Where well, preach at? <laughs> but when me and Larry stepped in the door of that Chinese restaurant, she would holler, hey, 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 and before me and Larry could get to the table and sit down, there was two plates of hot chicken sitting right in front. And I don't mean heat hot. I mean spicy hot. She had it sitting right in front of us for we could even sit down good. Every week. And whoever's week it was to let pay, the other one had to tip. So we put our tip on a track, leave it on the table. We did that every week. We went in one weekend before the store closed down. And we said, where's our little lady? She died. I said, what? She died. I said, what happened? She said, they were on a bus trip. And the bus overturned. And she died in the accident. That broke my heart, not because I didn't have hot chicken, but because I wondered, where did she go? But the Holy Spirit said, Brother Walter, you did everything you could do. For many years, you've left that woman tracks. You gave her every opportunity to be saved. Folks, we are having our last run here. It's time to quit fighting amongst ourselves, feuding within ourselves, and start witnessing to those who are without. These are our last opportunities. We're running out of time. These days have arrived. Number four, it denies Christ's authority. Verse 22, who is a liar, but he that denieth that Jesus Christ is the Christ, he is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. I don't want to ever hear anybody say, doesn't matter what church you go to as long as you go to church. That's a lie. Amen. If you go to a church that doesn't preach the word of God, you're in more trouble than you didn't go at all. Amen. It does matter where you go to church because some churches don't preach the authority of the Bible and they don't teach Jesus is the Christ. The most fundamental test as to whether or not you can trust what someone says is whether or not they believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. If they deny the Lord and his words, you cannot trust them in any way, shape, or form. Their lives are built on the imagination of human philosophy and not on the proven principles of the Word of God. 
Number five, the deceiver is an antichrist. Look at 2 John 1, 7. For many deceivers are entered into the world. Many, not just one or two. There's one devil, but there are millions of demons. Millions, millions, and millions of demons. There's also millions of antichrists in human form lying all over this world doing the devil's bidding. It's very clear. Very clear. It says they've entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, and this is a deceiver and an antichrist. I'm going to say something bold, but I'm going to say something true. If you're in church and you're focused on, on anything other than winning souls, you could be one of those antichrists. Mighty quiet in here. It's just the truth. We don't want to help the antichrist. We want to help the Christ. Say amen. We want to be ones who are helping those. We have to believe the Bible when they say there's many deceivers. We have to be aware that and, and know that the I know the truth so that we will not be sucked into the fantasy world of these antichrists built on imagination and illusions of evil. I was on the internet watching, I think it was Fox News or something other than a commercial come through about Harry Potter. And I thought, this is what our parents are teaching our children is truth? Hogwarts or something like that? Snakes and potions and witches and brooms? Is this what we're teaching our children? Is truth? No, it's an illusion of fantasy that's foolishness. They twist their little minds to accept illusions rather than truth. The Spirit of Antichrist denies that Jesus is the Son of God. The Spirit of Antichrist is now working behind the scenes, setting up and laying the groundwork for the arrival of the Antichrist during the tribulation. Every day that passes, the news media promotes some propaganda of the spirit of Antichrist as truth. And we as the children of God can clearly see the spirit of Antichrist working in our midst. Here's number six, and we'll go home. Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. We'll spend more time on this tonight, so please be back tonight. And he shall speak great, what? Words against the Most High, that's God and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and divided of times of three and a half years. Do you know what they're doing in Canada is changing laws? They're changing laws. They're changing what's true to what's a lie. Every time I look at Fox News and I see that, I don't even know what to call them, see that swimmer, what used to be a man, and now is a woman. Big old broad shoulders. I ain't never, never seen a pretty woman with broad shoulders. I ain't. And you can look at him, he ain't no woman, he's a man. I don't care what kind of bathing suit he's got on. And anybody with common sense knows God made a man stronger than a woman and made a woman smarter than a man. Oh, y'all are awake. Hallelujah. I scared y'all sleep on me there for a minute. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I want to tell you something. It ain't fair. I don't care how many hormones they take. I don't care how many operations they have. It ain't truth. And you know what? When that person stands before God, whether it's the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment, God's going to address them as they were born. Amen or amen. amen. Folks, the Bible says, and Daniel tells us, that Antichrist will speak great words. These people making these speeches, they sound smart. They sound educated. But you know what, Jerry Clower, in my book, was one of the smartest men that ever lived. Because Jerry would look at somebody like that and say, you educated beyond your intelligence. Amen. 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 Great swelling words. And folks, 
sisters going to wear out the saints. I'll talk more about that tonight, but I'm going to say this and we'll close. When my mama looked at me and told me she was going to wear me out, I had no problem understanding what that meant. I knew something rough was about to happen. And if I was at Ruby's house, I run head high in Ruby because Mama wouldn't whoop us when Ruby was around. But God help us after Ruby left. Say amen or oh man. But hide under the bed, hide in the basement. Didn't make no difference. Mama would find you. She's going to wear you out. And when she got done with you, you were done. The Bible says the Antichrist is going to wear out the saints. Listen to me. Be honest. I'm going to be honest. I'm getting tired. I fight it out there. And God help us, I fight it in here. I'm tired. Seems like everywhere I turn, there's a fight. I got to stand and defend what I believe, or somebody's cutting me down because I believe this and I believe the Bible. I'm getting tired. I'm getting weary. I'm not going to quit. But I sure do find myself praying, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Are you getting tired? I had somebody tell me this morning, I'm just tired of being in the house. I'm just tired of being alone. Amen or oh amen. He's going to wear out the saints. Why is he wearing out the saints? To stop us from taking advantage of our last opportunity. This is our last opportunity. This is it. What are we going to do? We're going to do it. We better do it quickly. Because when the trumpet sounds, our work on earth is done. Stand to your feet. Father, I've preached your word as best I know how. I love these people in this church, Lord. Whether they're visitors or members, I love them. I'm not here to make them feel bad or offend them. I'm just here telling the truth because time's running out of the hourglass. Jesus is coming soon. And Lord, if they're lost, they need to get saved. If they're not serving God, they need to stand up and start serving God. This is our last opportunity. We've got to stop listening to the world and start being faithful to God. Lord, maybe there's just some Christians here who are tired this morning. Help them come fill this altar and say, God, give me grace. Lord, I had one lady tell me, I just said, the only reason I'm making it is God's grace. God, we need your grace to keep up pace, to shine with your face and run the race. God, help us this morning. Help us be true to ourselves and come ask God to help us to believe only the truth and remove all false out of our life and help us shine brightly for the cause of Jesus Christ. But Lord, most of all, if there's a man, a woman, a boy or a girl who's in this building lost this morning, who's never truly been saved, I pray, Lord, as every head will be bowed and every eye will be closed, they'll leave their seat, come down the aisle, take Brother Eston by the hand, and say, I need to be saved. Let us take the Bible and show them how to be saved and bring them to Christ so they too can know that he's the Christ, the Son of the living God. Be saved unto heaven and Lord, remain written in the Lamb Book of Life. Oh God, move in this invitation. Save some soul. May Christians lead the way and make it easy for others to come. And Lord, let's fill this altar. In Jesus' name I pray. Heads about eyes closed. Many are already moving. How about you? Come on. Let's come tell God, I'm tired, but Lord, I need your grace. God, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Come on, right now as they sing. Across the bondage, Jesus. Do you know if you died right now, you go to heaven? No, sir. Every head's bowed, every eye's closed. All you got to do is slip out of your seat. Come by the S and stand right here in front of the pulpit. He'll have someone take the Bible, take you in the back, and show you how you can know for sure that you're saved. Come on, right now. Don't leave here without Jesus. There's room at the cross for you. There's room at the cross for you. Yes, there is. There's room at the cross for you. The oh, there's still room for you. Come, there's still room for whosoever will may come. Yes, 
and if you'll just count it.